Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall in Northern California. It's Friday, February 6, 2015 at 12.45 p.m. Storming and raining here in Northern California. Power outages going on in a lot of different places. So I want to get this video up because my lights flickered earlier. Um, yesterday, spiritually... In regards to, not my whole life, but in, in my regards here to uh, being on YouTube, worst day of my life ever. Um, and handled it totally wrong. So many different things going on with my father, my brother's coming down to visit. A uh, situation that Annie and I are going through. Um, a lot of things being said about me. Uh, some true, some not true. Um... I'm not here to make excuses. I, I, this is what happened yesterday, and you, everybody here has a right to know. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I even told my dad, Dad, I can't talk to you today. And that's just not me, saints. That's not me. Uh, I haven't seen my brother in years. I'd love to see him. How I was acting yesterday was outside of the will of God. and I have a lot to, to say here. And I... I, I, I I pray that you will listen to me in, in my heart, you know, not what others say. Listen to me from, from my heart. It was just too much. <laughs> Things I don't even want to bring up anymore. I like to leave the past in the past. Uh, and so I told the Lord I'm going to pause. I told everybody I'm going to pause. I told my dad I'm going to pause. <laughs> I said, I can't talk to you right now. I'm going to talk to you later. I got to pause. I didn't even tell him why. He heard the fl the plane flying over my head, though. He heard it. So, I told the Lord, Lord, you know, if it be your will, I'm just going to just delete you too. I said, dear Heavenly Father, this has just become overwhelming. I'm overwhelmed. I'm emotionally and spiritually and physically overwhelmed by what is occurring. Uh, would you just give me rest so I don't make any hasty decisions and let the situation improve if it be your will for me to stay and next thing you know I took a nap right there on the sofa for over an hour and when I woke up I'm like okay let me see did things get better no they got worse the things being said about me got worse the and in the heat of the moment, I did something uh, I've been saying I was going to do since <laughs> I started YouTube. I went straight to delete channel after reading some things, very personal things. Deleted this entire channel. And I had told people privately, that's where this was headed yesterday, that I, I told them that could bear witness. I said, if I can't get some resolution into some of this stuff, I'm just deleting this channel. Pray for me, pray for me. It, it's email, it's proven. And it was a selfish thing to do, especially as a watchman on the wall. More, you know, more accountability is on me than you will ever know. And so I deleted the channel and I deleted the G pluses. I, anything that was YouTube or anything talking about Minister Paul, just deleted. I even almost deleted my Twitter. But then I paused. I'm like, man, let me slow down a minute. And... I, I, to be honest with you, it's pretty peaceful. No one could say anything about me. Um, but there was like an emptiness and, and uh, there, there was no resolution. There, there, it, it was like a... It was like... A, I, I Clearly, I didn't handle it right. And, and that set in. I, I got in my flesh and acted in my flesh. And uh, although it was peaceful... Uh, to not have the responsibility of running a YouTube channel with over 10,000 people. It didn't feel right. And so, uh, Annie had told me, you know, you can ask them if, if they'll restore privately an email. You, you can ask them if they'll restore your account, but you can't. She'll bear witness to this. She doesn't have to. I mean, I don't really have nothing to prove here. Just ask you need to listen. She said, but you can't. Have uh, you, you can't have deleted your G+. Plus. She was reading all the help and stuff. She's real good at that. But uh, I, I, I sent out a Hail Mary. I sent out a plea to YouTube to restore my channel. 
even though I deleted my G plus and everything it had nothing um, somehow I was able to create a new G plus I don't even remember why it was just the deleting of the Lord and and I did send in a request to them to reactivate my my channel I, I had mixed feelings about it honestly did I'm here for other people you know, and I'm here for obedience to God. It, it's very challenging, but you know, some days I enjoy it, other days I take a beating, but in the end, it's what we do for the Lord, amen? And what the Lord wants us to do is help others. And so, before I went to bed last night, I, I asked the Lord, I said, you know, Lord, some people are saying I'm here out of disobedience because I told you I'd left in 2015. And you know, here's the truth. I did come on here and make a video and say the Lord told me to, to shut my YouTube channel down. And then I said goodbye to everybody and and and, uh, and left for about a week and came back and uh, I'm guilty of that. I sinned. And I knew I'd sinned and it was really playing, you know, with, with my emotions. It, 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 I don't ever want to think I'm being in disobedience to God, ever. And so that was part of it. You know, am I, in, am I here in disobedience to God? That was a real issue. And so I believe all this happened for a reason. I honestly do. Of course it happened for a reason. God allowed it. I told God, if, if I wake up and they say yes to my plea, and, and let me tell you something here, saints, and you know this is true. YouTube has never been a friend to me when... <laughs> I mean, they, they cut my account down to 15 minutes in a, in a heartbeat. When I tell someone to remove a video about me, they never do. I mean, there's 20 videos out there about me that, uh, you know, it's like Shannon Johnson texted me today. I said they restored my channel this morning. I sent him a text, you know, Mr. Bo Soldier for, for Christ, 4 p.m. Check it out. I'm going to put a link in my feed. I'm going to be in the chat box there with you praying. I said they restored my channel. I woke up, my channel was there, um, and, and he he encouraged me not to quit. He he's a good man. He Shannon Johnson in Southern California is not just a YouTube video maker. He's a great man of God. I continue to say that, and you know, time after time he's there for me, just as an ear and a lot of wisdom. And so. I woke up and I'd received an email from YouTube and it says, we understand you'd like to have your account reactivated, uh, check into this link and re-log on and, and, and have a great day. And I couldn't believe it. I clicked it and my channel was back. It was gone. People have screenshots. It was gone, deleted, gone. Minister Paul, 1,337 videos, comments, G plus, gone for good. And I, 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 I texted Shannon, I said, man, YouTube restored my account. And you know what he texted back? He said, no, God did. But I, mean, I didn't tell him my prayer to God. That's how I know he hears from God. And, uh, and, and, and the channel was back. And now that the channel's back, I'm thinking, well, we still have all these issues to address. So I sat in there for three hours thinking about it, praying about it, listening to worship music, waiting to hear from the Lord. What do I do? What do I say? Made a couple comments and I was thinking, man, I just wait on this. Maybe sit here for a week. Maybe hope people forget. I, I make a forgiveness video again because I don't believe in coming in here and apologizing for the same thing over and over in the past. Well, if I come on here and I make an I'm sorry, I repent video two months ago, I don't believe I believe at that moment I'm forgiven by God. I believe he forgets our sins and throws them as far as the east is from the west and remembers them no more is Satan will bring them up and recall them to your memory. And so I don't believe I need to come on here and uh, make a second apology video. What I'm saying is for things that I've been accused of in my past that I'm going to address at the end of this. If all you want to hear is my apology, I apologize. And why I, I deleted the account, you, that's all you need to hear if, if, if you need to go now. Because I'm going to talk for probably who knows how much longer. And then 
he texted, you know, uh, he texted me some personal things about forgiving others and stuff like that. And so I did. There was two people I went and forgave. It's on their website now publicly and privately. And um, one has forgiven me. The other one hasn't. But, you know, when you for yet, maybe she hasn't seen it. Um, I pray she forgives me. But and I'm not saying she won't. Let's not go back there again. Uh I had a pastor friend, he used to say, the past is past. Stop your stinking thinking. And he was right. We, we shouldn't dwell on the past. That's yesterday. It's past. Um, so I, I sent those forgivenesses out, and then I went and prayed, and, and there was such a release in my spirit. Because, see, when you forgive others, you're not really setting them free. It helps and benefits their life, and and gives them joy uh, knowing uh, that you know that you, you cared enough to forgive them but really when you go forgive somebody you're not setting them free you're setting yourself free from the bondage of unforgiveness and that's what happened to me today I got a breakthrough uh, uh, the Lord said okay now come I'll hear your prayer after I'd done all that forgiveness and the reason why I'm mentioning those two is because there's other people still mad at me and stuff I've already forgiven you I've already uh, made several videos about that over and over and I don't believe I need to come on here and make a forgiveness video for things two months ago And I'm gonna address every single one of those issues if you want to stick around, but let me tell you a little something about uh, Why this channel and myself is the way it is if you'll just give me some time So that's why the channel's back God brought it back so I can go forward here in a much more improved fashion I mean, I have, uh, I went back to the old version of Screen Matic, so things ain't extra enlarged where there's things you can't see. The microphone I bought four months ago is working perfectly. I spent an hour today. Finally, I said, I'm going to get this working. It's working. I'm using, remember that 37, it said U37 uh, microphone I bought? It, it's a desktop that sits there. It used to sit back here in the corner. Remember that? I'm using that now. So I have a better microphone, a better version of Screenmatic, and uh, and a better attitude to not go and, and continue to do the things that I did before. Um, but I do feel compelled, if you want to listen for a little bit longer, to explain a few things as to why I am on this channel. And some people love it. Some people really dislike it strongly. You can't please everybody. but uh, So I have some notes here. You know, when I grew up, my mother, who went home to be with the Lord in 2007, she, she raised me up in the church. Carried, in, carried me into church as a baby. Matter of fact, when I was born, uh, they say in the maternity room, the entire uh, women's ministry was in the in the 60s the entire women's ministry from the church she'd went straight from the church to the hospital and the entire women's ministry was in there in the room praying uh over me and stuff like that and uh before i'd even been born i was literally born into <laughs> the church uh i'm not talking about buildings now i'm talking about the body of believers and uh i can remember you know being dragged into church you know, as far as my memory can go back with one hand and sitting in the little church, we called it children's church and not allowed to go into the big church because we were too too loud. And, and then finally getting introduced to what we called the big church, the main church. And uh, so I was raised in the church and no matter where we lived, I grew up in the Bay Area. Um, whatever church was local, my mom and I, we, we, we went to the church. <laughs> uh my brothers and sisters were sent off to foster homes, so it was just her and I. But um, uh, no matter what city we lived in, and we lived in a lot of different cities in, in the Bay Area, if there was a church anywhere near our house, we were in it. I've been in United Pentecostal Church of Christ churches. I've been in regular Pentecostal churches. My mother raised me on Assembly of God, AOG churches. I've, uh, I've been to Baptist churches, I've been to Southern Baptist churches, and, and the sad part to me about the churches I can remember growing up in was that people who were leaders in the church, the pastor, let's just say the pastor, the pastor in the church, 
he seemed like this perfect man when he was in the pulpit and was really an encouragement and inspiration to me but I would find out things later about his life that he was doing in secret that really hurt my spiritual walk with the Lord and really discouraged me and, and then after I'd learned these things uh, that that church was never the same for me and, and this is like talking about from age like uh, 12 to 16 that I can remember certain exact churches I'll give you a couple examples in the United Pentecostal Church of Christ Church I was in um, I was tithing at the age of 15 as a bus boy making three dollars and ten cents an hour I was tithing ten percent it was mandatory at the church and I, I was I, I didn't have much money at all but I I was just being obedient to God being what what they were teaching me that's what I was doing but then one time I was invited over to this pastor's church and I knew I noticed that like his kid my age had a brand new drum set and Yamaha keyboard and bicycles and the dad drove a Cadillac See, I didn't know he had all these cars at his house because he drove this old beater to the church this old rundown church of 50 people in Fairfield California I'm like look at all this money here and me and my mom were eating like ramen <laughs> you know and, I'm, and so I started thinking, well, why am I giving this man all this money and he keeps asking for money when he don't need no money? Clearly, all the money that was coming into the church was going into this two-story house and we're in a, in a two-bedroom apartment. And I felt like the money I was working for was going straight to him. And it really turned me off that it turned out his kids were spoiled, rotten, funded, funding his family with everything they could ever want when I couldn't even afford tennis shoes I left that church and, and it hurt me it set me back man it set me back later on at a Baptist church when my mom and I moved to Vallejo California if you know where that is um, I started dating the uh, anybody remember high school I started dating the uh, the pastor's daughter this pastor had up there in the pulpit he, he presented himself as the perfect person with the perfect life with the perfect message they didn't believe in operating in the gifts but hey mom had me in church because when I was in church I wasn't on the streets and when I wasn't on the streets I wasn't in trouble simple as that um, I didn't get much out of the services other than learning about Jesus and who he was and, and this and that but this perfect man in the perfect building with the perfect life after I started dating his daughter she 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 worked where I worked and I started dating his daughter casually she started telling me he's not perfect <laughs> when he comes home he hits he hits my mom and he drinks a lot and I couldn't believe it that this man who I'd given my respect to as a leader and mentor in my life in the church with this perfect life and the perfect message and had the answers to everything went home and got drunk and would slap his wife at the table while eating boom in front of my girlfriend left that church told my mom I will not go to this church and uh, again it set me back two in a row backslid these churches are phony and you know what it continued on into 2007 uh, you know uh, I started having home church a lot but when we moved out here in, in 2005 there was no churches here uh, a couple years later they built a church here I gave a testimony on this and uh, our first church in this whole area there was only one church and I got a flyer on my door and I went to this church immediately got a position in the church went from usher to head of security to minister in three years and same thing happened again what I found and I, I was telling my mom in 2007 I'm seeing some things in here that I've experienced in the past in these churches and you know and it's really dr bringing me down and stuff and uh, 
she gave me the best advice. She, I, I said, but I like it. You know, I like having these friends and I like coming here to have a place to get prayer. And she gave me, uh, I think, the best advice that I could ever give anybody. She said, Paul, if you don't want to give money, don't give money. If they're insisting on money, give a dollar. Uh, but you need to you need to get fed the word of God and be around the the you no know, the, the fellowship and uh, you need to learn to spiritually mature. In 2007, she told me this. Uh, she was uh, in her 70s. To take what you can get. To in other words, that God can be in any building. God can use you in any building you're at and anywhere in the world. He, he can bless you. He can touch you. He can put favor on your life. He can hear your prayers. doesn't matter what building you're in. It's just a building. Take what you get out of it from God. Give a dollar bill if you don't feel like giving. Uh, you know, if it feels like forced giving. So I asked my wife for like $51 bills because my business was doing nothing at the time. And uh, and every time I'd go, I'd give a dollar. I always had a one dollar bill, just one dollar, one dollar. And um, ultimately, I learned that there were some things going on behind the scenes that caused me to leave the church. And I have not went to another church since then. I will visit churches. I will go to this church in Sacramento. I will go to that church in Sacramento. But I won't what they they call. You know, I don't believe in joining a church or, uh, and, and long story short is, is, um, there is no perfect church, but, but, but what I spiritually matured in is that I forgave them all. I I've learned to operate in forgiveness and these people I'm talking about. Some of them may have already went home to be with the Lord. Some of them I'll, I'll probably never see again. I didn't let their actions harm me. I can go sit in any church right now and hear from the Lord and fellowship with the people and leave not feeling committed to a building. And the majority, we have a home church here. And that's what we do is we have church at home. But I didn't make them my enemies. And, and see, that's what I see a lot of people doing. As a matter of fact, to go above and beyond that, there's people here locally who've watched me on YouTube. And they're looking for a local church. The same church I left, I say, go try it. Because I know they can get fed there and, 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 and let, the, let God lead and guide them, not me. In other words... I didn't let what happened with the body of believers over here, whether it be in San Jose, California, or Vallejo, California, or Fairfield, California, or Sacramento, California, whatever drama was going on behind the scenes, I didn't allow that to put me in a state of unforgiveness with the pastor, right down to the usher, to the people in the church. No enemies, no animosity, no unforgiveness. Uh, enough to where I will still send people to go there and have their own experience there because I know God's got their back just like he has mine. And that's my story on growing up in the church. There's no perfect YouTube channel. So when I started this YouTube channel after leaving the what I call the, the corporate church, you know, and having church at home here, I decided that I'm not going to come on here and be a hypocrite. I'm not going to come on here and tell you I have a perfect life and uh, and a perfect walk with God and and then you know just make one video a week where it's just a perfect message from a perfect person with no responses and then I'll see you. I told the Lord if I come on here I refuse to be the way others treated me. I want to be different. Uh, what I did was I put myself through ministry school, and then I went put myself through prophetic school. Uh, I went to a couple other uh, uh, Bible colleges I could mention that I disagreed with. Um, so it, I'm not I'm not here speaking as if someone who doesn't know the Word of God or doesn't know how to operate in prophetic. I, I went to four different ministries. I disagreed with a little of all four, but God gave me the wisdom and knowledge I needed from the Holy Word and, and from the revelation gifts and uh, 
and I moved on from them. That's what those things on the wall are on there. They're just pieces of paper. Uh, but I'm not here unlearned. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I don't hold the, the churches I left or the ministries I left responsible uh, for what happened in my life. And my point of this is what you see is what you get with here. I'm not going to come on here and put on a suit. I have suits. And I'm not going to have the perfect background behind me and the perfect face and the perfect care and present to you a perfect life because then I'd be doing what was done to me. I'm going to come on here and you're going to see the good, you're going to see the bad, you're going to see the ugly, you're going to hear me saying I'm leave, you're going to hear me say I'm tired of this, you're going to hear me, uh, I think it was three or four months ago, I forgot how long ago, I got drunk one day on here and, and made a whole bunch of enemies and uh, said a whole bunch of really bad things uh, and uh, was a complete wretched mess of a sinner like I used to be before I was saved. And some people still have not forgiven me for that, but I, I didn't have to do that. I could have went to a casino and spent all my money. I, 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 I could have went to my old hood where I used to hang out. I could have went anywhere. But what you saw was me stumbling and falling flat on my face. There were some people, because that's what I had committed to do, was to show you me, the real me, not perfect me, but me daily, my struggles, my victories, my good, my bad. I don't, uh, I've never hit my wife ever. I may have drunk that day, but I haven't drank since then. If I wasn't delivered of alcohol, I wouldn't be here that, that one time drinking was a one time thing and I repented and the fruit of it is that I have not went back and drank again. See, God forgives. And so that is why you will see a lot of people upset with me is because I'm not coming on here pretending to be that perfect person with the perfect ministry because that would make me a hypocrite. And I, I believe that that's why a lot of people stick it out with me is because they know I'm real. When I come on here, I'm going to tell you what's really going on. I used to always say uh, two years ago with 300 subscribers, truth spoken here. I would say that with every video. Uh, if I disagreed with someone, I would tell you I disagree with you. Truth spoken here. If I disagreed with something the government was doing or them spraying chemtrails in the cloud, I'm going to expose it and I'm going to say truth spoken here. That was my motto because I'm a man of integrity that the truth will be spoken here. And what you're hearing today, despite what anybody else will say, is that I'm telling you the truth here. I failed that day I got drunk. I came on here and for a half hour begged for forgiveness. 75% of the people instantly forgave me because they know they've sinned and fell on their face too. 25% of the people to this day, people who I thought were close friends of mine, even though I've went to them privately and said, man, yeah, I admit it, I failed, please forgive me. They refuse to forgive me. And that's gonna, that's gonna hurt their walk, not mine. Because I was set free for asking. But what I'm not gonna do is come on here and ask for forgiveness again to address these videos being made about me about being a drunk it was a it was a it was a one-time thing and I stumbled and fell and you saw it uh, I didn't do it behind the scenes and hide it from you because that was not my commitment to God when I came here I do tell people I want to leave YouTube a lot that's the truth spoken here I'm not gonna tell you I want to be here forever that is not the truth but I was in disobedience to God when I hit delete on this channel my walk is not perfect with God. And uh, if you want to hear the truth on here and you, don't, and you want to see someone living their life out and working out their salvation and their walk with God and sharing things from the past and things that you can learn from and that it's okay to go to a church. This sister over here just down the street, I said, yeah, go try the church. I'm not going to speak out against churches. I'm not going to speak out against your religion. You know what Catholicism and this and that as other people do I'm just gonna tell you my life not your life and there's and uh, some people will like that and some people won't and this video is for both of you guys 
let me cover my notes here um, when I came on here and became a licensed and ordained minister I said I didn't want to be like the other ministers who had secret lives and I've kept that promise um, my I apologize to every single person on here who has any feels like I've hurt them in any way known or unknown sins I ask for your forgiveness um, I apologize that yesterday I acted out in rebellion to God and uh, let fear take over me there are physical threats against me but uh, I allowed fear to take over I allowed rebellion to take over I got in my flesh and deleted my channel I apologize for that I've forgiven people uh, that that were part of that yesterday um, my, my wife had a dream uh, and she rarely shares her dreams with me ever and I'm not a I have dreams every night every single night but I don't come on here and share my a lot of people are against dreams I don't come on here and share my dreams uh, daily not even weekly if it's from the Lord and the Lord tells me it's from him I will come on here and share it whether you like it or not because what truth spoken here um, and I believe that that's how everybody should live their life. My, uh, my wife had this dream and she shared it with me a couple of days ago and I should have listened, but I didn't. Remember when I had a dream about the snake? It's the last video before this and, the, and I cut the head off the snake with the golden sword and its head turned gold. She had a dream about a rattlesnake following her. She went to go visit her family, it followed her. She went to come visit me, it was following her. We were trying to communicate. Uh, she went to the store and the, it was a, she, she describes it as a very large rattlesnake. And we were trying to communicate on radios because we got split up and she couldn't talk to me on the radios, but the snake was still there. And finally, she cut the head off the snake. She just cut, that's what she said, she cut the head off the snake. And then the radio started working again and her and I could communicate. And everything that kept going wrong everywhere she went all fell into place. And she said, Paul, this before we even got out of bed. This is about three days ago. She said, Paul, I'm going to interpret the dream for you. I'm like, wow. I mean, this, this is really powerful from, from my wife. She said, do not focus on the snake. It's a distraction. It will, it will hinder all of the other areas of the life. She said, everywhere where I was trying to go, the snake was distracting me when she said, all I had to do was cut its head off. She said, do not go through in your ministry and on YouTube, uh, letting, you know, focusing on the snake. Don't let the snake be your focus. Let God be your focus and just ignore the snake. Think about that. Ignore the snake cut its head off and the distractions will leave there's there's three different oh, I'm almost finished here 33 minutes when I said that there there's there's three different voices I hear I I hear God and in, in, in I'm talking about in in my in my my suitcase they call it in, in my uh, in my in my mind in, in my spirit and in my soul uh, one one voice is God one voice is Satan, and it, and uh, and the other voice is me. Thoughts of my own in my own head. Um, what I've learned to do is discern which one is of God, and which one is of Satan, and which one is of me. And this has taken decades to discern the three voices. And I'll give you an example. Uh, a few years ago. I was in prayer for a scripture for a sermon I was going to give and my my voice in my head you know just just said uh, you know do do John 14 and I'm thinking no nah, I don't think that's what the Lord wants me to do and then so I went in to go pray and I have a prayer closet and I heard another voice say Hebrews 26 and I said, okay, 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 because I keep a journal, and I journaled this. And when I came out of here and, and sat here and started to uh, do my sermon, the Lord God 
clearly and audibly without any doubt that it was my father God. He said, I want you to do Matthew 24. This is me, your father, do Matthew 24. And I was amazed because John 14 was not what I was thinking in my head. The voice I heard myself was not relevant to anything that the Lord wanted me to speak on. When I went to go look up Hebrews 26 that I heard in my own prayer closet, there is no Hebrews 26. So the second voice was Satan trying to distract me. Remember, ignore that voice. The third voice was crystal clear God. And I can hear God crystal clear. And I can discern. And so let, let me dress in closing here. This is a long video, but it needs to be said. The, the title of this video is going to be Learning to Let Go and Staying Focused. Learning to Let Go and Staying Focused. I have learned to let go of everything that has happened prior to this moment right here. Good or bad, it's in the past. If, if Jesus said, I forgive you of your sins, I just read Hebrew 10 today. If I forgive you of your sins and I've made atonement for your sins, then they're forgiven and they're forgotten. Up to this point right here, forgiven and forgotten, okay? So why should I remember them and why should other people be bringing them up? Well, I shouldn't and they shouldn't. Plain and simple, clear as that. We don't, we don't accuse each other of things Christ has forgiven us for. And so, um, check in my notes here. I, I've apologized to you all. I've apologized to fear. I want to talk about things that, uh, that I, I must uh, do and continue on here and things that I will not come on here and apologize for in closing. And then this will take a while to upload. You, you can move on and we'll get back to the work of the Lord. Um, I will not, uh, uh, let me just read my notes here. I, I must continue as a watchman on the wall. My time to leave is not yet. I've apologized for that. Uh, I, I realize that there's many videos out there about me. Some of it has truth to it, but I've apologized for it. And Jesus has forgiven me for that. And I've forgiven myself for it. Why can't you? If you're truly a follower of Christ, you're to forgive me. I'm not going to address these videos because there'll be even more videos made about me. I'm not going to come on here and apologize daily for something people continue to bring up that I've already apologized for and been forgiven for. I'm not going to do that. Okay? Get that in your head. I'm not going to continue to apologize daily. For uh, I cannot, here's my note, I cannot stop people from saying things on me on the internet. But what I can do is stop the way that I've been reacting to them. And so from this day forward, I'm not going to react to them. And remember, I can't see a lot of the comments people are going to say about me. I'm not going to, I think the other day I said, can you put, cut and paste what they said so I can see it? If you're accusing me of something from my past, uh, I, I don't want to hear it. It's forgiven, it's forgotten, it's in the past. So uh, if you see someone commenting something and I don't acknowledge it, that's probably for the best because if it's an accusation about my past, uh, I've already been forgiven for it. And, and apply this to your life too. Don't listen to a 40 minute video and not learn anything. Apply this to your life on, in your walk with God in your, your walk in the churches and how you view the leaders in your life. I will not apologize for my dreams and visions that I know are from God. The dreams and visions I've shared on here uh, the Lord has specifically told me that there's some things that are going to come in 2015 that I'm to sound the alarm for. That's why I introduced myself today as a watchman on the wall. So I will not apologize for being a watchman on the wall. I will not apologize for having dreams and visions and sharing them on here. I have even more to share for things I are going to happen in 2015. And I know it wasn't in my head. It wasn't Satan. It was God. I know my father's voice. I want to apologize for those. People want me to apologize for things uh, uh, that I've said prophetically. But the Lord has not led me to apologize for that. I'm not going to apologize for that drunkenness three or four months ago or whenever it was. I've already done that. I'm not going to. You can make a million videos. I'm not going to apologize about that. I'm not going to apologize for coming on here and making a testimony video for PTSD. Because God told me to. Maybe someone got blessed by that, that you can conquer and beat PTSD too. Uh, I, I've already apologized for that. Um, 
if people want to take and use that against me, well, then they're not my friend. I'm not going to come on here every day and apologize for, for making that video about PTSD. People are going to use this that, that, that drunken moment I had against me. Well, you're not my friend. Let people open their eyes up and see that, you know, you're not my friend. So there's no need for us to hang with. I, I don't hang with everybody. Do you hang with everybody? There's people I won't hang with. If you're not my friend, I'm not going to hang with you. I don't know why you're coming around trying to hang with me. I'm not going to apologize for the, uh, uh, for leaving every single day. Because as you know, I, I did delete my channel. God brought it back. So God has a reason for me to be here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. And, and the, the final thing in closing is I'm not going to apologize for my wife and I being a Satanist. Because that's the most absurd rumor going around YouTube right now. Is that my wife and I are secret Satanists. If you hear that, let them know that that's a bunch of baloney. Um... I'm not going to apologize for making a testimony video of something I went through uh, 30 years ago. That's under the blood of Jesus. It's, did you hear me? It's under the blood of Jesus. I'm not going to apologize. That rumor is absurd. It's false. It's wrong. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm A Satanist do things in the secret. This is what the Lord told me to tell you right here. Satanists do things in the secret and in dark places. They like to do secret things and keep their what they do a secret. Clearly, that's not me. That there is no proof or evidence. It's a false accusation. I'm not going to apologize for things that I didn't do wrong. There's people viewing this video right now. Satanists won't come up here and quote the word of God and say, I claim this promise for me in the name of Jesus Christ and so he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. What's that? Zechariah 4.14. They're, they're not going to try to uh, come on here and lead people to the, the cross. Uh, so I'm not going to apologize for that stupid, ridiculous, uh, absolutely unfounded accusation because there's no truth to it. Uh, that, that, that's all I need to say on that. Thank you for hearing me. That's what happened to my channel. That's my walk with the Lord. I have much more to share. Uh, I mean, look at look at this right here. Remember this? Pierce the darkness and the open doors. And there's me being covered in all these arrows. We're trying to come in on January uh, 14 with open doors. Well, this right here, what's the date? Uh, over a month ago, that came to pass too. That's our Chinese food list when all the kids were here. Look at all that food. This came to pass to pierce the darkness. Satan is darkness. Jesus Christ is implanting me the light of his life. And so now I'm hidden Christ. You're going to learn something about me if you stick around here long enough, saints. And I pray that you can apply it to your life too. Is I don't quit. I don't give up. I stumble. I fall. But what does the Bible say about stumbling and falling? You get back up. You get back up. It, it's not the falling. It's what you learn when you're down and how you react when you get back up. You understand that? God is for you, not against you. You need to get that in your head. God is for you, not against you. People may be against you, but God's not. God wants you to prosper as your soul prospers. God wants you in good health. God wants you encouraged. God wants you full of joy. God wants you to come on here and share your things. And God wants you to ignore the fiery darts of the enemy. And God does not want you to hang around in dark places with dark people. And so that's my life on here. Uh, I hope I've explained everything. i got a lot much more to share. Remember Shannon Johnson at 4 p.m. Uh, Ezekiel 33.9 it is. I'll put a link in this video a little bit before four o'clock that's where i'll be at four o'clock doing things of the lord with with brothers and sisters in the lord if people I, I, the reason why i'm explaining all this is uh, i was on my wife's computer earlier this morning and, and seeing things that are blocked on my computer i could not believe what was being said about me i could not believe some of the videos that i saw that i have blocked uh, some of it I took constructive criticism from, just like my mom taught me about going to church. 
and I've applied it to my life today. Gave some apologies, adjusted some the way I'm going to operate in the future. Uh, the other of it, I just left right where it was. Did, didn't even touch it because it was just absolutely absurd. It was from the enemy, and I don't apologize for the enemy at all. He He's the enemy. That's why they call him the enemy. So, thank you for listening. Let, let me just say one more thing. <laughs> let me say one more thing. I think the, the most hurtful accusation being made against me right now is I'm not fit to lead. Let me close by addressing that. Do you want the leader that I explained about growing up with that does everything in secret? When you see him, he's perfect. But behind the scenes, he's all over the place in sin. Or do you want someone, let, let's look at the leaders in the Bible. Moses, man, he hit a man in anger and killed him, a murderer. Saul was murdering Christians. Did you know Saul, before he became apostle Paul, was at the feet of Stephen while he was stoned to death? Do some research. I challenge you to do some research and find that in the book of Acts. He murdered Christians, several of them. Jesus himself called him from the sky. His life wasn't easy, beaten with rods, shipped, wrecked, put in prison. Think of some of the other leaders that God chose and, and, uh, and ask them, were they qualified to lead just by quoting one part of Titus where you can never get drunk and this and that? Um, I didn't come on here to get your tithes, to be a bishop. Or a deacon. People need to learn what, the, the, the word if they're going to use the word against you. I didn't come on here to say, okay, look, congregation, I'm the bishop of this church. Send me your tithes. Send me your offerings. Once a week, you're going to come on here and see me be perfect. Don't sway. Don't leave my channel. I have you under control here. This is your church. Uh, I came here to, to, to operate in the prophetic and share my life. The only thing I want to lead you to is Jesus lead you to the cross lead you to the gospel lead you to forgiveness lead you to salvation lead you to Jesus Christ am I qualified to do that God says I am sure